Welcome back to Marketing School. Today we are looking at backlinks analytics in SEMrush. There are multiple ways on how to approach this. I will walk you through my steps as an SEO consultant. Let's jump in. What I'd like to do first is to start with the backlink analytics. I can see the backlink profile of any domain. I don't have to create a project to inspect the link overview. That makes it easy to check your domain, spy on competitors, and compare yourself to them to define a backlink strategy. In this tutorial I will use the SEM Rush domain for illustration. Let's get their data by typing in the domain. As soon as we get the result, we can see some basic data at the top. The authority score is the overall domain authority on a scale from 0 to 100. Don't be scared if your DA is not as high. Any score above 50 is already really good. Above 70 is really excellent. Don't compare yourself to an absolute score but rather see it in relation to your competitive landscape. We also see a little trend graph next to the score. You want to see this consistent for a high score or upward trending for a lower score. Next, we see the number of referring domains. That's the total number of unique domains that point back to you. The number of backlinks is usually much higher because any referring domain can have more than one backlink to your site. In general, the number of domains is more important than the number of backlinks. Each additional backlink for an already existing referring domain is less valuable than a link of a new referring domain. Therefore, I rather see the number of domains go up. For the backlink analysis, I ignore the traffic estimation and keyword. Of course, there is a correlation, but not necessarily a causation. I'm more interested in the backlinks. Traffic and the number of keywords can be dependent on the amount of content that's been published. I look at those metrics when I analyze the keyword opportunities and content gaps. Lastly in the top panel we see the toxicity score. This data is only available through another SEM Rush tool. To uncover that score, we need to run the backlink audit and add the site as a project. This makes more sense for your own domain but not your competitor's investigation. More on that late in the video because this score is very important to the health of your backlink profile. When we scroll down we see more information about backlink trends. Those are great to see, especially if you see the activity going up for competitors. That means they are actively building backlinks and you want to keep up to not fall behind. If you want to, you can get detailed reports on those metrics. But for now I want to focus more on the general profile. For example the category of referring domains. This is important because relevancy matters to Google. If you get backlinks from travel sites for an industrial manufacturing business, those links are clearly irrelevant and Google notices that. I usually don't pay attention to the exact number but look at the allocation and therefore the percentages. This comes in handy when we do a comparison. Next up are the referring domains by authority. This is an overview of all referring domains grouped by their DA. Similar to SEM Rush's DA score of 80, other websites have their own authority score. This is being reported here. As a rule of thumb, the higher the DA of a referring domain, the better the backlink is, obviously. This is also a very common allocation we see here. The majority of backlinks are coming from low to mid-level scores. Again, this doesn't mean that much by itself. You need to compare it to your competitors. If you see a higher DA score for one of your competitors and notice that they have a higher percentage of higher DAs referring to them by the same number of backlinks, your goal should be to increase the quality of the sites that link to you. The backlink types are also important. You do want to have the majority of your links text-based. Image linking sometimes can be an easier option but it's less effective. Link attributes are also crucial I only focus on follow versus no follow. By default every link if not specified is a do follow link but certain sites want to indicate to search engines that the link they have implemented is not an upvote by adding the no follow tag. In general, no follow does not have much weight on your authority. Down here we have the top level domain distribution. This is not a very detailed separation. For me details, you can open up the full report. But for us, we just want to get a quick overview that we can compare to our rivals. .gov and .edu are usually very authoritative sites and you if can get those links, that is great for your SEO. A couple of things to look for are some outliers. You do want to have the majority of .com and your related TLD. For example, .de if your site is a German domain or you're translated into German language as well. Sometimes you see some weird top-level domains like .pw or .ph. That can be from spammy sites or if you paid for link building. Of course you can have those referring TLDs but it shouldn't make up a big chunk of your distribution. There are also more data points available but for this purpose we will skip them. You can also go into one of the detailed reports which will drive you to one of the other tabs. But for a competitor audit, 
I think it is overkill. However, I do want to highlight the competitors section. In here you see a list of websites that are based on common backlinks. That does not mean that your actual business competitors are listed here. For example, if you don't have any backlinks with your competitor in common, chances are they won't appear here. So what can you learn from that list? If your competitors are listed you have in general some overlap. If they are not, the backlinks referring to their domain might be also good opportunities for you. There's a reason why they link to your competitor. Maybe it would be beneficial for the website owner to link to you as well. You can click on any of the websites listed and you will get automatically to their backlink analytics overview. Fast forward, how do I compare the backlinks to my competition? I go through the backlink analytics and copy over the most important data points into a spreadsheet like this. It's really quick. I just open the sheet on a second screen and type in the percentages for most distributions. I don't use absolute numbers besides the DA, number of referring domains, and number of backlinks. It all starts with the domain authority. Because this is the number one metric I need to compare myself to the other sites. Then I need to see what sets me apart from lower DAs in my competitive set. And what do higher authority ranks do better than me? Let's look at the sample data. All three domains have a very high DA and backlink numbers. When we look at the referring domain authority we see that the majority is in the lower buckets. And it looks very evenly allocated between those three. But what if I would have the biggest distribution in the 0 to 10 category and all my competitors have their majority between 11 and 30? I need to increase the quality of my links. Also take the total number of domains into consideration. It could be that one site has very high DAs referring to them but a low number in total. Maybe their total DA is also lower than yours. So this exercise requires some human judgment and there is no silver bullet. A very similar approach to the referring domain categories. I do want to see a very similar profile. In danger of sounding like a broken record, the same goes for the top level domain. Just one caveat here. Look for heavy outliers and also consider the language. If you are not active in the Spanish market but your competitor is, it makes sense for them to have .es referrals. This does not mean you should too. One personal favor to ask, if you have learned something please leave a like. On to the next backlink tool. Now, we are looking at the backlink audit in SEMrush. To access this data, we need to add the domain to a project and run the backlink audit. You can see it either through your project dashboard or the link building section in the left navigation menu. I mainly look at one thing in the audit. I get the same data points as in the analytics but one level deeper. This time I can see how healthy those backlinks are. I start with the overview of how many backlinks are toxic, potentially toxic, and healthy. We can also see different visualization of that data. As well as additional information like new and lost domains. Some of this information we could see already before. But the one thing we definitely need to check out is the audit to see the harmful domains. From here we can look at each link and manage it. We can put it into a list to reach out to and ask to remove the backlink. Or we can send it to a disavow list, which we can then export as a txt file and submit to Google to ignore the links. Because this is the live backlink audit of an active site, I am not going to show this process on actual links. One other detailed report I like to look at is the anchor text types. This is related to the toxicity scores but gives you a better overview of one aspect of that data. I like to see healthy branded, organic, and naked links. Some money and compound links are great but should be in moderation. So before you get started with implementing new links, you should clean up your existing ones. And then... Take all these insights and build a backlink strategy and action plan. Watch the next video and learn how to identify specific backlink opportunities in SEMrush and start building those juicy links.